Hello, gentlemen. Jeff Sanchez, Children's Right Advocate here again. This comes from a brilliant sociologist named Estelle Villar, who females tried to kill back in the 70s. To ensure the happiness of a man in subjugation is brought about by a woman and not some sort of other men or animal, a series of training exercises are built into a man's life, beginning at a very early age. It is fortunate for women that the male infant is under her close jurisdiction, as it is easiest to train him then. She takes great care that man is trained for a particular purpose. He must put the fruits of his labor at her disposal. Woman has had this aim in view throughout the upbringing of her child, and she engenders him in a series of conditioned reflexes which cause him to produce everything to satisfy her material needs. She does this by manipulating him from his first day of life. Consequently, by the time his education is complete, he will judge his own value by women's estimation of his usefulness. He will be happy only when he has won her praise and produced something of value to her. One of the most useful factors in conditioning man is praise. Its effect is better and much more lasting than, say, sex, as it may be conditioned throughout a man's life. Furthermore, if praise is applied in the correct dosage, women will never need to scold a man. Any man who is accustomed to a conditional dose of praise will interpret its absence as a displeasure. Training by means of praise has the following advantage. It makes the object of praise dependent for praise to be worth something it has to come from a higher source. Thus, the lifter, it lifts the praiser giver to a superior level. It creates an addict. Without praise, he soon no longer knows whether or not he is worth something and forgets the ability to identify with himself. It increases his productivity. Praise is melted out not for the same achievements, but for increasing the higher ones. The moment a male child has been rewarded by a, by a warm smile and a customary inane kind of a encouraging adult baby talk, for using his pot and not wetting his bed, or for drinking that last drop in his bottle, he is caught up in a vicious circle. He will repeat the actions which call for praise and endearments. And if at any time recognition is not granted, he would do everything in his power to regain it. The happiness he feels when praise is restored will already have assumed the portions of an addiction. For a woman, man really is a kind of machine, if rather an unusual one. Her ideal, if she could redefine it, would be a robot capable of thought, of programming itself, of continuing to develop and produce an ideal set of functions to meet each new situation. Scientists, too, are working on developing of such robots, robots, which will work for them and put the results of their labor at their disposal. But these robots will be constructed of non-living material. Long before man is in a position to choose his own way of life, he will have formed the necessary addictions to praise. He will be happy only when his work brings him praise. And because he is addicted, his need will increase, and with it the type of achievements so much praised by his woman, the male need, could of course be satisfied by another man. But as each man is working feverishly in the interest of his own addictions, he has no time to help others. Indeed, Man exists, as it were, in a state of constant agonistic competition with other men. It is one of the reasons why he loses no time in getting his own private pelagamist, whose praise will be his exclusive right, someone who will always be at home waiting to tell him when he's been good and just how good he's been. It is apparently only by chance that women are best suited for this role, but, in fact, she has been preparing for it all her life, waiting to assume it. Premeditated. 
Take care.